Hear me all right? Yeah, mute yourself, please, everyone. Uh, if you haven't, I'm going to. So um, here we are. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening and to everybody, wherever you are on the planet, in the world, in the universe, whatever galaxy you are part of. Uh, welcome to today's sharing of Harmonize to Energize. My name is Terry Matthews, and it's my pleasure and privilege to share aspects of the art of Jin Shin Jitsu, mainly self-help, and any overlapping connections that it has with any other Ooh. modalities. If you're a complete novice to Jin Shin Jitsu, Jin Shin Jitsu is an art of harmonizing life energy, which is sometimes called prana, chi, uh, please mute yourself, um, or life force as it moves through energy pathways in the body. And in Jin Shin Jitsu, we help that movement by placing our palms of our hands, our fingers and our thumbs on what we call safety energy locks, which are actually the size or the diameter of the palm of your unique hand, not mine. There's 26 of them, the left and right of the spine, three in the arms. And when we place our hands, fingers, palms on these energy locks, we can adjust the frequency and vibration of the prana or life force as it moves or not through um, our body. And the main reason it doesn't move congruently is something or largely to do with our thoughts and our words and our actions. So it's a very simple but powerful way of harmonizing those three aspects of our being. It was brought to the United States and probably the rest of the world by Mary Eno Burmeister back in the 70s when she lived in Burbank, California. She had studied with a master from Japan during the Second World War years, Master Jiro Murai, and <clears throat> continued studying with him from America for about um, 12 years. I think they did correspondence courses with one another. And she eventually, after 17 years of study, emerged as it were from the cloisters and revealed the art and all its intricacies, its simplicities to the world bit by bit. And we're very grateful to Mary and um, Soon it will be her birthday and I'll have to remind myself because we are in um, <clears throat> the constellation now of Libra, sun sign of Libra, which is influencing as above, so below. And the qualities of balance, harmony and justice are generally uppermost when that influence comes in. So anyway, without further ado, it's uh, my pleasure and my honor to introduce today's mystery presenter. I've only met today's presenter online, as it were, through Facebook um, and LinkedIn and this kind of thing. But I do happen to know that she was, um, our, or is, sorry, was, past, is a Jin Shin Jitsu organizer and has been since 2019 in Berlin, Germany. Her background is in agriculture, and she may want to talk a little bit more about that because I don't really know much about what that background actually meant. But anyway, a warm welcome, without further ado, to Suzanne, Suzanne Hugo. Can you unmute yourself? Yes, I do. Oh, yeah, 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 good, 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 good. So welcome, Suzanne. It's an honor and a privilege to have you with us um, from Berlin. Um, and this is a, what the first time, yeah? This is uh, this is great. Um, I've watched some of your videos and what have you online your Facebook. You're clearly someone who understands a lot about the energy field and um, is out there encouraging people to connect to Jin Shin Jitsu, correct? Yes. Thank you so much, Terry, for this introduction and for for reminding me um well actually i have i have met you online several times because i follow we are one so 
you are familiar to me, but the other way around, it didn't happen because it was StreamYard and you couldn't see the participants, I think. Oh, the we are one period, yes, and then harmonized to energize. Oh, okay, yeah, I, I think I was involved there for a bit. So anyway, <laughs> I'm going to I'm gonna zip it and I'm gonna open to you. And here we go. Welcome. So um a warm welcome from me too. Here in Berlin, it's already pitch dark. It's eight in the evening. We are under the waning moon. We don't see much uh, from it. And I have cuddled myself up with all kinds of things to feel cozy. And yeah, when Terry invited me, I thought long and hard about the subject. And I thought what fascinated me most about Jin Chin Juku is actually the ability to balance fear and fear is an aspect that that is um, so predominant in our lives and I don't know about America but in Germany when you look in the, into the news when you read the headlines everything is about we are going to fail we are going down the economy is going down there are attacks here this is dangerous you're constantly 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 presented with fears and anxiety. And I mean, even our German angst made it to the dictionary, right? So uh, angst, <laughs> angst seems to be a very German um, feeling, although it is there for all of us. And um, yeah, I've been working abroad for 13 years for development agencies, um, doing rural development, mainly in Africa and Southeast Asia. <laughs> And during my time in Africa, I had the chance to visit Rift Valley, which is a very, very beautiful place. It's just amazing, but it's where we all come from. And when I stood there and I looked around, you have this amazing, gigantic valley with all these herds of animals. You have shrubs and you have small bushes and trees. And it's beautiful. And it's very, very dangerous. And wow. when you look in the trees and when you look into the, um, look at the monkeys, how small they are and how they are on the trees, um, how do they survive? They have only one chance of surviving, and that is by building a group. Because in a group, you can delegate tasks, you, you don't have to be constantly afraid on the watch. You, you can delegate that. So you have to be able to, to build and maintain relationships. And Jin Shin Jutsu is about the study of relationships and how to maintain a relationship with yourself and being in peace with yourself, being in peace with others um, is, is something we absolutely need. And one fear that is um, very, very present in all of us, and I think that springs from that source, is this fear of being an outcast, of being cast out of a group. And so we are very, very sensible, and we are very much afraid when we are shunned by other people or um, when they don't accept us, because it goes right into our brain. It's our heritage that we are lost without a group. So this we need to be accepted. And um, when you then look into the attitudes in Jin Shin Jutsu, we have this try to. We want to try to fit in. We want to try, try to belong to a group. And we even have it in our language. We, are, we have this um, expression untouchable. I don't know if you, many of you, I think, remember the series. You are my age group. I think you, you have seen it. Um, but being untouchable means you're out of society. You're kind of outcast. It's not really a positive thing. You, you can't be touched. And when you're not touched, you're not feeling alive. And Jin Shin Jutsu is about touch and about feeling, feeling alive. And the sense of touch is actually this totally under-researched and un, uh, underestimated sense because our sense of touch really 
bases us in reality, bases us in the now. Our sense of touch gives us a feeling we are here. We are constantly touching each other. During the pandemic, there were um, studies done that people in the Western world touch themselves about 400 times a day. Can you imagine? Involuntarily, you're touching yourself about 400 times a day just to reassure you that you are there, that you are real. So the touch really connects us with reality. And I find that fascinating. And that we have with Jinjinjutsu something that balances us and that really puts us into reality, into the now. Because we are here already. And um, yeah, when I started with Jinjinjutsu, it was when I was back in Berlin. And I looked it all up and I thought, my goodness, what it can do. And there was this safety energy lock 23. Master of your own destiny. And at that time, I was not very happy and very low. And I, I, I felt so far away. And um, I tried to touch it. And it didn't feel good at all. I really, really didn't didn't connect with me. So I thought, well, I want to be the master of my own destiny, but how do I get this? So doing other things and, and getting there slowly. And nowadays I can touch my 23s and I feel happy. And um, yeah, why is 23 so important for us? Why is the four steps so important for us? It's um, when we look at it, Four steps is, yeah, one safety energy lock that rules, well, they don't rule, but it's kind of ruling all, all the others. And it's in the middle of the back. And the 23 is a source of life in the end because it supports the kidney. And the kidneys, the kidney energy supports all the organ functions. When you look into the TCM, they say your uh, repository of kidney energy can deplete. We say we can refill it. It's in the middle of our back and it's really, it's stabilizing us. When you feel into it, it supports your back. And from there, there it flows out. And the four steps is ruled by number six, and six is balance. But it's a physical balance. It's the one with the balance that connects us with the earth. So when we are in balance and when we are straight, and we can be so straight when we stand up and we hold ourselves here, we don't slump anymore. We automatically straighten up and we connect to the earth and we become one again. I find that really fascinating because when you're in balance, you're no more in fear because you know yourself, you're in harmony with yourself, you have a good understanding of yourself and then Fear can't touch you. And what else is there to say about four steps? It rules the muscles and it has the element water. And there again, water, water is life. Water is the source of life. That's where we all come from. Our bodies consist of more than 50% of water. And what the heck does it have to do with the muscles? And then my thoughts went back to these little monkeys in the Rift Valley and their fear. And what are our primarily reactions to fear? It's in our instincts. We can freeze. We can duck and cover and hide. We can run and we can fight. This is ingrained in our nature. And when we 
when we hide, we have to go still and we have to be able to bend and we have to be able to low our heart rate and we have to be able to breathe very, very, very quietly. So we need muscles to do all that. Yeah. And then when we lay down like this, we are again in our center and, and we are alerting all our other senses. But we also have to be able to spring into action. Because when we hide, we could be detected. And then we need to run. And then we are like this arrow that is running from the bow. When you see a sprinter, when you see this 100, 100 meter competitions, how they duck and then how it goes. You need the, you need the energy, you need the energy to go. And well, when you run, of course, you need also a lot of energy. When you fight, you need the will to fight. You also need the straight to be straight. You need to you need to be able to be flexible. So all this is ruled by by four steps. All this this instinct reactions um, can be balanced by four steps. Ooh. And being afraid doesn't mean yeah. you have to duck and you have to hide. There is also there's also an, an aspect to fear that makes you creative because you have to find solution to escape to escape danger, be it a physical one. You have to find solutions to be able to maintain your relationships with other people. Um, you have to become creative uh, or you want to become creative. So um, fear can also be really a source uh, if we see it like this, and all the time we talk about fear in its big, big aspect, we forget about the fun part. And I think that is also in Jin Shin Jutsu that, that we say we have fun in fulfillment. Fun is fulfilling, understanding, is no thing. Fun is number five. And number five is human. So when we are all human, we are fear-free because we are in ourselves, we are centered, and we are balanced. So we, we don't need this fear and anxiety. And when you look at fear and when you do this number game, which I like very much, fear comes to three. And three is our doors, our shoulders. So when we don't let go, we carry all this weight with us. We are not movable anymore. We are not pliable. We are ducking down. But when our three is in harmony, we can move and we can bend. And I like that very much. Um, the other aspect of the four steps is this water aspect, and water is something very special. Um, water can be water, can be liquid, it can freeze, and when it freezes, it increases in volume, but it has all this air inside, and when it freezes, it can break. So when we have too much fear, when we are literally freezing up and then we splinter and we also have that in our language we have splintered hearts that we have to mend together again so when we are full of fear we can literally break that's the kind of ice aspect of the fear and when the water is running when we are alive we can we can always find ways and means um, to live our life as we choose it and as we want it and we, we can find solution. What is, it can be so nice when you, have, when you are in the rain and you have these drops that are literally caressing your skin and it's, then it's wonderful when you, then you feel alive. You have, your, your senses are alert and awake but you can also be in a nasty storm and then water drops really can hurt you. It can really, literally, when you have this, this spiky, how can a drop be spiky, but it feels spiky on your skin. So 
when the water is together with the wind, it's kind of not in harmony and it's really hurting and um, hunting you. And um, so how do, and, and when I started Jin Jin Jutsu, I thought, I thought a lot of the energy of water and, I, and it felt like a garden where you have irrigation channels. And then I actually had a dream when, when all my irrigation channels were filled. It was really fascinating. Well, I hope I'm not boring you to death. Um, no, Suzanne, I, Suzanne, you're not boring uh, at all. But I am losing eye contact with you when you're looking up. Can you? Oh, come, yeah. I can, can come look, come a little closer. I'm sorry. Yeah, um, a little more down, as it were. When you relax and you yeah, and you you look straight at the camera, we can get the eye contact. But you're looking up. I think is that right? Okay. Yeah, my camera is a little bit to the side because if I put it in the middle, I only see the camera and I don't see you anymore. <laughs> so, um, well, uh, if you just stare straight, that's it. We can see you. It. We okay. got contact, yeah. So this, this water, this being alive and this... And when you feel when you feel the energy flowing inside you and when you feel these little bubbles that really literally find their way through your, your your body i think it's it's a great feeling it's just just wonderful and coming back to the 23 that that rules the whole thing um four steps is scorpio and libra we are now in the time of libra and it's balance and when i looked it up actually i thought a lot of people who are under this sign are moody or people I know are moody but um, a balance in harm a, a balance in, or libra in harmony is actually a person who very well knows what he or she wants and when I look them up very famous libras one is Putin actually and Margaret Thatcher um, <laughs> That was that was very strange, but I thought, yeah, they they are definitely a Libra in harmony because they know what they want, and they are they are in turn with themselves. Um, it I, it was really weird I, because the, the people I know are far more friendly and open minded and and outgoing and yeah, it was was a big co contradiction. And um, Scorpio in itself is Scorpio is about generating. Scorpio is about thinking deep and going beyond and wanting wanting to experience and wanting to to do things new and thinking it new. And well, there you have people like Bill Gates and of course myself, although I'm absolutely not in this league. But I like to dive deep into it and, and think about it and think it maybe in a new way and Scorpio is reborn and Scorpio is the water aspect of the four steps and the Libra is the air aspect of the four steps and so you have the water and and the air going through you and rejuvenating you and keeping you alive and flexible and movable um, but on the other hand you're also grounded and looking at the 23 from the number aspect when you add two and three it's five and five again is a human being it's a human being in its fullest expression in the Jinjujutsu terms um, it's also a 14. You can also look at the 23 as a 14. And then you're on the mental plane, then you're again in the middle, in the bridge between the physical and the spiritual area. And yeah, that's it. Building, building bridges, um, being fluent, being flexible, that is, that is a life. And then we can have the fun and 
the fulfillment. And um, one more thing to fear that, that I also thought about is a lot of people in Germany are now in the age between 45 and 60. And fear is actually a disharmony also of the four steps. And that when it's in harmony, you're far more courageous and looking at life and wanting to, to live it and experiences in the fullest. And with this pandemic and this distancing and not touching each other and becoming untouchable, I think that is actually a reason why these fear and anxiety levels have risen in society. And one small thing actually we can do is we can balance ourselves or we can give touches to other people or we can recommend them to touch so we can at least create a little bit of peace and harmony in our own private lives. And I would like to go with you through a small sequence. And I would like to start with a mudra by using the thumb and the index finger. Place your hands on your laps. Suzanne, can you show that again? Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Yeah. You wrap one thumb and one index finger. Oh, the thumb okay. on the one hand and the index finger of the other. It's like going together like this. Mm. Is that complicated? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you take these fingers, you leave one open, and you wrap it with the other hand. Mm. Okay. It's um letting go of worry and fear. I mean, worry is the little sister of fear. And I think in our daily life, we're constantly worrying. And I did that a lot today because until lunchtime, I was perfectly relaxed. And then I started with state fright and kind of panicking. <laughs> oh my goodness, I'm going to get completely lost. I'm going to forget everything I wanted to say. And so this has been my savior today. And maybe you take a look at your hands and you see, have you taken your right thumb or your left thumb? I don't need to know that, but um, maybe it's interesting for you if you have to get to let go of old worries and present fears, or if you have to let go of present worries and old fears. Make yourself comfortable, let your shoulders drop.
And now we move with our hands to our knees. We just loosely cover the top of our knees. Make yourself comfortable. Do you want to show everyone that, Suzanne? We'll, okay, we'll, I'm standing we'll up. Yeah. I'm standing up. Go just ahead. place your hand on top of, you don't particularly choose an energy lock. You just put your hand on your knees. Actually, I like to sit down like this doing it, but um, whatever is comfortable for you, maybe, maybe it's more comfortable to cross one leg only, and then you would put both hands there. Feel your knees under your hands. It's the biggest joint in our body, our prime mover, the one that connects the one and the eight, this feeling of unity, this willingness to go forward. this oneness within you and with your surroundings. And all this in your own rhythm and in your own pace. We all have a rhythm that is slightly different. Some people are more hectic, some people are more slow, some people are very relaxed, some people build up tension. Leave your hands there and feel your rhythm. Exhales of worry, exhales of fear. And support the energy going down to make room for new and to make us able to connect with the earth. Feel how the knee actually molds into your hand. Relax your shoulders. And now move with your hands to the back of your knees. And that, I don't know how you want to do it. Oops, up. If you want to do your hand from the side, or if you just go under. Oh, la la, that's complicated. Wait a second. <laughs> Gymnastics. Um, if you want to go from the back and then just put your, your uh, legs together, or if you go from the side. What is comfortable for you is right. And do it on both sides. <clears throat> so this is actually a step from the bladder flow.
it's really great when you have tense muscles, when you do a lot of sports and your muscles hurt afterwards. It's wonderful, tricky to help you not to suffer from cramps or anything. Support the descending energy of the bladder flow and support the ascending energy from the kidney flow. And you do it like I'm doing it now. You're also supporting your second depth, which is the bonus. But you have to find what works best for you. And we are again connecting with our ones, our oneness, and our rhythm, our very own rhythm. And from there, we move to our toes. Come back to here. And after spending some time in our unity, in our own system, in our own rhythm, we are now opening up for the inhale, for the abundance, for the widening. We are again supporting our backs. We are ready to receive the energy because every new inhale and the two means also that we are going to look out into the world from the center of being me and one and oneness. We are learning that there are also other people, other points. So we are opening up for duality, for yin and yang. We can go and look what connects us with the other person. What is ours? What do we want to keep? What do, what do we want to give away? We are receiving. Can relax your shoulders, adjust your posture, feel comfortable, 
this is one of the wonderful aspects of Jin Jin Jutsu that you're meant to make yourself comfortable. We are preparing for the last step. Letting go of worries and fear, remembering our unity and our being one, and happy and in harmony with ourselves and our own rhythm. Having gotten the energy we need, we move forward to the 23 or upwards yeah. in this case. And there we are. The bridge between the physical and the spiritual plane. In our core, what it means to be human. We are limited to our physical body. But without our physical body, we couldn't touch. With our mind, we can travel, we can be anything, anywhere. But our physical body is one that is here. And we need to feel it. And we need to treat it. We should treat it right. We should give it some attention. And being free of fear and balance, firmly rooted to the ground, we can actually feel the fun and fulfillment that is the positive aspect or the harmonious aspect of the four steps. Because we are not meant to suffer all our life and to duck and cover. We are meant to stand up, walk freely, and live our life in happiness. Thank you. I'm uh, unusually speechless. <laughs> because I'm in a, a very peaceful place. You might be able to tell that from the tone of my voice. Um, that was beautiful, Suzanne. Thank you. Thank you. It was beautiful. I don't have any questions. I, I just want to nurture the space I'm in at the moment. However, this is the opportunity for anyone um, who's joined us today. If you have any questions for Suzanne, you can raise your hand. I'll have a quick look in the um, chat room to see if there's anything in there. Well, you've been making uh, a lot of sense. Um, there's a comment there. And someone did that hold with the uh, thumb and the index all the time. Um, and then Yona asks, can you repeat what you just said, read the eights just now? The eights? Well, I make it up in the moment, but <laughs> <laughs> um, it's also I'll like, read the second well, depth. Yeah, the second depth comment. Uh, ah, okay. Because I go up here. When you go like this, you're really in the back of the knee. I have to go this side, sorry. You're really in the back of the knee, and you're you're in this step from the bladder flow. But when you put in your, oh, this is complicated. <laughs> put in your hand like this. Your your hand automatically touches. What is this part of the body called in English? What do you? Yeah. Ah, you you automatically palm your calves. 
And when you palm your calves, you're harmonizing your second depth. Perfect. So when you do it like when you do it like this, you have first and second. And it's really, really very effective if you if you do that after sports. Someone, Diana, was asking an alternative to the 23. Um, over to you, I could answer, but over to you. <laughs> if you can't uh, reach, basically, yeah. <clears throat> well, you, you can use your fingers always. Um, you can try the 14s, for example. Uh, when I started Jin Jin Jutsu and 23 itself was far too much for me. I did, um, nah, it's not the mediator, it's uh, Terry, I'm, I'm lost. Supervisor. Supervisor, sorry. Yeah, I did the supervisors because I, I thought, well, let it flow and let it go through and be be like the water when when you're at the beach and you're building you're building a little sand castle and and the water is coming, so it's taking it off one by one by one by one until it's until it's done. So, I very much believe in this um, supporting the general flows in the body because eventually it will reach every safety energy lock. But again, in your own rhythm without forcing anything. Very good. Okay, has anyone got any other questions? Anyone got their hand up? No, no. I could be naughty here because I've seen who's <laughs> who's here, who's not showing their face. <laughs> uh, I have a comment. <clears throat> is that Shilpa? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so, uh, Suzanne, I uh, followed your um, your uh, description of of everything very clearly. You know, there was a just in listening to you speak in your speech and in the way you are being, I was reminded a lot of water and fluidity. And, um, you know, you appeared in, in quite a relaxed composure. So your message and who you are being seem to align very nicely. And I really enjoyed this session. Thank you. Thank you so much. You should have seen me an hour ago. <laughs> <laughs> I was playing the eye, eye of the tiger to get energized. <laughs> uh, yeah. oh, that's, a, that's a great track. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're a survivor. <laughs> yes, definitely. Uh, I, I haven't had stage fright in ages. It's a, it was amazing. That was a good experience. Yeah. Get that adrenaline moving. That's part yeah. of it. Full of full yeah. death, right? Get it moving. Yeah, experience what you're talking about, right? Be your own testimony. Yeah. No, um, there's beautiful presentation and some thoughts to ponder. Definitely some thoughts to ponder. So um, how are we doing? Well, we got 10 more minutes, folks. If you want to uh, add anything, say anything. Or if you, um, Suzanne, want to show us another self-help or something? Well, after we've been talking about it and we are support, we should support our back, I think we could do a bladder flow, right? Yeah, we could. Yeah. Um, it fits with the season. Choose your left side, choose your right side, whatever it is. One hand goes to the neck and the other one goes to the... That's the coccyx, right? Yeah. The back is the coccyx. All right.
I love this bladder flow that clears the head, and releases the tension in the neck. And with your hands in your neck, you're giving yourself over to the power of 12, to the Zai will be done, to build up trust. Trust that everything will be right. And with our other hand, at the bottom of our room, we are supporting us. And we are not only building up trust, we also build up the physical trust in ourselves that we can always support ourselves, which is a very wonderful knowledge that many people have lost. They don't trust themselves anymore to be able to hold themselves and to stabilize themselves. But we experience it every time we practice the bladder flow. And that's a great gift. And we move our hand from the coccyx to the back of our knees, like we did before. Again, connecting with our core, our oneness, and our own rhythm. We're moving down again to our 16s, to our ability to integrate new facts, new surroundings, new impressions, new feelings into our
Now we give our loving attention to our little toes. And experiment a little bit for yourself. How does it feel? Good? Maybe it feels better tonight only to hold the on um, the floor side of the toe, or maybe you really want to cradle it for all sides, or maybe just the top. Check it out for yourself. And do what is best for you. Find your own rhythm. Your body tells you what you need. Slowly release your hand from your neck, from your toe, come back, stretch a little bit, be yourself, and thank you so much. Time is up. Um, well, actually, I always add on an extra 15 minutes these days just in case. Is there anything that you want to share with us? Any courses coming up that either you're facilitating or organizing? Oh, Sarah is coming to Berlin. I'm so excited. It's the first time she's teaching in Germany. Oh. oh. Yeah, she has chosen Berlin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, that's, that's great. And uh, uh -huh. yeah, I'm very much looking forward to that. And okay. I'm going to... Hmm? Okay, yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to do a presentation on Sunday. There is a um, nature reserve and they do once a year a day with cult all kinds of cultural attractions. And Jinshinjutsu this year will be one of them. Oh. We will be practicing with people who come along like 20 minutes. Relax. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, you, you've think... certainly engineered a very peaceful energy field. I mean, I... Can certainly say I haven't felt that peaceful for a long time. So um whatever you're doing, keep doing it. <laughs> Thank <Whatever> you. Thank <laughs> you. It's wonderful, yeah. So um Suzanne, are you doing anything on Facebook yourself or on any of the other social media platforms? I will I will do online classes next year. My mother's health is not so good, and that takes up a lot of my time. So, oh, welcome. Um, yeah, and when I'm free, I'm, I'm going to do a number of online workshops on the attitudes. Oh, um, okay. 
thing. So I'm going to be nice and I will advertise them on Facebook and LinkedIn. So could people email you? Would you be open to that? Could people Definitely. Email? I'd be delighted. Okay, so what what's your email again? Team at gin. Oh yes, it's that one. <laughs> yeah, that one that one. Uh the long one. Team yeah. at gin slash uh, it's not slash, it's um what's called there's an um underscore. Not underscore, it's a middle the middle one. Hyphen. Is that a hyphen? Team at gin hyphen. 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 Yeah. Okay. Jin hyphen shin hyphen jutsu dot Berlin. I can write it in the chat. I think that I've yeah. just done it for you. Oh thank you. Yeah. Team at Jin hyphen shin hyphen jutsu dot Berlin. Yeah. There you go. Is that it? You find me on LinkedIn, you find me on Facebook. On Instagram, and I'm not so often, and I also have a website. So, and if you Google Suzanne Hugo Berlin, you actually do find me. <laughs> oh, what your website? Yes. You can write your website in if you want. Well, well it's jinchenjutsu.berlin with this hyphen. Oh, the, the website is the same. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Jinchenjutsu.berlin is the website, one and all. All yeah. right, let's 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 see who's been with us today and who will show their face <laughs> or not. <laughs> Diana, Eva, Shilpa, Monica and Joe are going to show their face and all your others are not. Hey, you know what, folks, and it's perfectly fine. It's up to you. But when you show your face, it creates an extra boost to the energy field. It connects us all. Um, you know, when we kind of disappear, we could be doing the washing, right? <laughs> doing all kinds of things. So it breaks up the energy field. But I'm not going to penalize you. But next week, I want to see all your faces. All right. Well, that's wonderful. So thank you again, Suzanne. Um, truly, Thanks. truly peaceful. I mean, just <laughs> wonderful. So Thanks. I appreciate you coming on. And um, I might ask you if you're interested in coming on again sometime. Um, you know, you have a lot of interesting perspectives. Um, and I'm sure you have more to share. Um, everybody else, um, well, all of us. Have a wonderful rest of the day and the weekend and the week until next week. Uh, well, I think it's actually me. Um, and then the following week, we have another mystery presenter. Um, the <clears throat> replay will be up, as you know, within about 24 hours or maybe sooner. And um, I'm trying to think, is there anything else I wanted to say off the top of my head? Mm. No, um, if you all enjoyed Susie Plattner last week um, her classes online in two weeks you can go to the JSJSMB website um, and click there and uh, join up and um, just a early plug I will be hosting the one and only <laughs> Juice oh wow yeah Juice Alias um, will be doing a two-hour webinar. I believe it's on pain. Um, there was some discussion about whether the subject would change, but I believe it's on pain. So Dr. Chuse, medical doctor, acupuncturist, et cetera, et cetera, will be doing a two-hour webinar November the 4th. It'll be, I believe, 2 o'clock New York time. The information will be on um, the JSJ. SMB website. And uh, Stephen asked me to talk about Jed Schwartz, I believe, is doing a class um, in California. Are you here, Stephen? Or have you gone? No, you probably didn't even come. <laughs> uh, 
anyway, he he wrote me a, a note about um, Jed doing a five day class live somewhere in California. Sorry, Stephen, I've forgotten exactly where you said he was in California. But if you again, if you go on the JSJSMB site, look up forthcoming classes um, under Jed Schwartz. If you like Jed, he's turning up in California live. And you might want to check that out. All right, everyone, enough of me. Thank you again, Suzanne. It was a pleasure and privilege to have you. And thank you, everybody, for joining us. And I'll see you next week.